man, I feel there was a lot of wisdom in there. <laughs> So let's get let's get into the word there now. Um, Father, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you because your word is yea and amen. Thank you because your word produces life. Even as we share your word this morning, Holy Spirit, let your word bring transformation in our marriages, in our relationships, and in our homes. Empower us to be able to live according to your word and not according to our experiences. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, yesterday, um, I began looking at the blessed family. And my objective was to look at uh, what it takes to have a functional, working, and a successful family. Then we looked at the role of the people in the family. And I said, for the people in the family, I'm talking about the husband, the wife, and the children. Then we're looking at a the practical wisdom, how to apply practical wisdom in the family. Then I asked the question, why is the family necessary? We're streaming live on Facebook. You can join us on our Facebook page, Joy FM Facebook page. Why is the family necessary? Number one, the family is the building block of every society. The family is the building block of every society. Number two, Family qualities determines societal qualities. Family qualities determines societal qualities. Number three, family values determines societal values. Then I said, the breakdown of family values, the breakdown of family qualities equals the breakdown of societal values and qualities. Then I proceeded further. To talk about wisdom for the man. Wisdom for the man. So today I'm going to do wisdom for the man. Recap. And then the wisdom for the woman. Number one. The wisdom for the man. And this applies to whether you are married or not. Because if you have an expectation of marriage. These are the things you must have within your mind. Number one. As a man. You must take your place as the priest of the home. The man, you must take your place as the spiritual head of the home. Then wisdom for the woman. Number one, the woman, you must take your place as the help mate and support your husband and your children. The woman, you must take your place as the help mate. And support your husband and the children. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. You can read it. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Listen, as a woman, you must identify vacuum in your man's life and fill it. You must identify vacuum in your man's life and fill it. As a woman, you must protect your husband from vulnerability. As a woman, you must protect your husband from vulnerability. That is taking your place as a helpmate and support for your husband. Listen, as a woman, learn to dissipate your husband's pressure. Learn to dissipate your husband's... Don't add to the pressure. Don't add to it. The man has gone to work, come back home, home to pressure. No, it doesn't work like that. Even when to discuss issues with your husband, you need that wisdom to be able to determine when do I discuss? How do I discuss? There's a scripture in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible talks about the Shunammite woman. Thank God for women. The Shunammite woman, he, 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 she always sees Elisha passing. And then one day she said to the husband, she said, she said, she said to the husband, please, I perceive that this man is a holy man of God. Let's make an upper room for him. The way she even said it, please. There, there are some wives, the way they talk to their husband, hey, Kwame, hey, Kofi, you, you, hey, you don't talk to your husband that way. You didn't marry your husband. Your husband married you. Oh, Yes. 
So you see, as a man, you take your place as the spiritual head of the home. You take your place as the priest of the home. And as a woman, take your place as the helpmate. Ask yourself, am I helping my husband or I am adding pressure to my husband? Number two, the man, you take your place as the protector and the defender of your family. Under your watch, under your watch as a man, your wife and children must feel secured. Then the second one for the woman is that decide and determine to submit and respect your husband's authority. As a wife, listen, if you are not ready to submit and respect, don't be a wife. Remain single forever. Because the Bible, the word of God, the position of the, I'm not talking about United Nations, I'm talking about the word. The word of God, the position of the word of God is that the woman is supposed to submit to the man. Oh yes. And the position of the word of God is that the man is supposed to love the wife. Listen, there are two positions for husband and wife. The wife, your place is called submission. Husband, your place is called love. There are no conditions attached that, oh, as a husband, unless my wife submits before I will love. No. As a wife, unless my husband loves before I will submit. No. Before you entered the marriage, your place in the marriage as a wife is to submit it's not just submit submission and respecting and the place of the the man is to love and you see the man's responsibility is greater because he says love your wife just as the same way christ loved the church how did christ love the church he died for the church so as a man you are supposed to die you lay down your life for your family you, listen so you the woman shouldn't think that submission is 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 actually a weaker place I'm, the love one is more difficult because you love unconditional i mean look at the love that christ has for us that is the same love god expects husbands to have for their wives so you see nobody loses nobody loses because the woman you must submit and the man you must love and you know what paul said in ephesians 5 33 he said that let the wife see to it that she respects the husband let me make a statement the greatest need of a man is not sex no it is not the greatest need of a man is no food no it is not the greatest need of every man is called respect hey if you disrespect a man, he can be a houseboy, he can be a trotro meat, he can be the lowest person. If you if the if you disrespect, disrespect a man, you have touched his sensitive part. The greatest need of a woman, men, listen, the greatest need of a woman is not money. It is called care, caring, caring. If you care for a woman, you will bring the best out of her. Caring, caring for the person. So you see. The man, your place is to love. The woman, your place is to submit. So as a wife, as a woman, before you step into marriage or if you are in marriage, you be determined and decide to submit and respect to the authority of your husband. There are, we, we, are, we don't have two presidents in Ghana. There's only one. There cannot be two husbands in a room, in a home. Marriage is not between man and man. No. There, there can only be one leader per time. The leadership of the home is under the authority of the husband or the man. That is what the word of God teaches. So the place of the wife is to decide and determine to submit and to respect the authority of your husband. <laughs> Listen, if you are not married, never marry a man you cannot respect. <laughs> you will worry yourself. If you marry a man you can't respect, it's a signature for frustration. Don't even let desperation cause you to go there because you will leave. You will, li you will leave. You look at the man. You size the man, not with your mouth, but with your heart. <laughs> you, 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 you just cannot. Don't even try it. Don't marry a man you just cannot respect. It is a signature for frustration. Number three yesterday, I said the man, you are, you must take your place as the provider of your family. That as a man, you are supposed to provide for your family. Then the, the family must never starved or be stranded under your authority as a man. 
Number three, for the woman, be interested in your husband's life. Be interested in his vision and be interested in the passion of your husband. It applies both ways. Men are work and goal oriented. Women are relational. They, they are relational oriented. I mean, for instance, in my home, my thinking, because I'm a pastor, if, I, if God blesses me with money, my thinking is, how do I get the work of God going? How do I get the work of my, That's my thinking. For my wife, what do we do with the family, the children, their clothes? They, listen, I have never thought of children's clothes before. It, it doesn't even cross my mind. I'm thinking the work of God. How do you, but my wife is thinking. You see, and we need the balance because if we don't get the balance, we'll go off. So it's important for my wife to think that way so that I can also think this way because men are work oriented. And I discovered that before Eve came into the garden, Adam had a work. There was a work. You see, that's why men are passionate about their work. They, uh, Eve came into a relationship. Eve came to meet Adam. It, it was, it was a real, Eve just came in as a marriage partner. But you see, for the man, the man was engaged in work. So men are more work oriented. Women are relational oriented. They think about the family. They think about the relationship. So you see, if you are a smart husband, you can entrust a lot of those things to your wife because they are naturally gifted in managing those things. Somebody just said, hi, pastor. <laughs> uh, you don't know. The way my wife can spend. Oh, yes, women are expensive. That's why you went to my... Women are very expensive. Women are... They are not poor people. They are very expensive. Women are expensive. Sure. Very expensive. Let the women shout it is true. Yeah, women are... From the crown of the head to the sole of their feet. Women are very expensive. That one, you make up your mind. We'll talk about it later. As a wife, you must be interested in your husband's vision passion and you must be interested in your husband's life number four i said to the man that give your wife the assurance of your love continually and passionately the fourth one for the woman is that pay attention to the needs and the challenges of your husband it applies to both ways pay attention as a wife, you know, small challenge, you know, I mean, okay, I know some children are up. Small challenge, you have closed the door. Your husband can't travel to Bolegatanga again. You have closed the door. You have set police post because of small challenge. It doesn't work like that. Pay attention to the needs of your, your husband. And if you're a husband, also pay attention to the needs of your wife. Number five for the wife. The wife must also be a role model for the children. If you have a son, your sons should be able to say, I want a wife like my mother. Oh, yes. If your sons cannot use you as a yastic to marry, you are a failed wife. And if you are a husband and your daughters cannot use you as a determinant for their husband, you are failed. Role model. Number six, wife. Celebrate and appreciate your husband's effort and positive acts. Don't be overly negative celebrate and appreciate look that's my man you are the best my god hey would you believe look celebrate your husband's effort and appreciate it your husband gives you you know you called for thousand cities your husband gave you 500 oh Kofi, thank you so much for the 500 you know wow that's powerful after appreciating and celebrating then you move a step further Kofi. which my universe seven cry you have appreciated it. What am I using this 500 for? What am I using? No, don't do that. Don't do that. The man will react. Don't do that. Don't do that. Then I said, number five, for the man, bring out the best in your wife and children. Add value to your wife and children. And then number six, for the man, be a role model for your children and your spouse. Now listen, quickly. This is wisdom for bringing up children in the next three minutes. Wisdom for bringing up children. As a couple, never delegate your responsibility in bringing and raising your children to others. Let me repeat it. You know, we live in a generation where everybody is busy. 
oh, everybody. Last Sunday, I went to preach in Insawin prison. And I was talking to one gentleman. He was not in the service. I said, why were you not in the service? So, Pastor, I was busy. I said, hey, you are busy in prison. Then you are very busy. Don't delegate your responsibility in bringing and raising your children to others. Not even to your house helps. Don't get overly busy for your children. Listen, if you delegate their upbringing to other people, you leave them at the mercy of the people's values and the people's beliefs. Because if other people are raising your children for you, they will inculcate their values into them because they are not you. And for your information, God will hold you responsible for the children that he has given to you. So as parents, we must never delegate our responsibility in bringing and raising up our children to others. The raising up of our children is a non delegatable responsibility if there's a word like that it's not negotiable the raising up of children is it you can't delegate it it is not possible no raising your children is not a company work where a ceo will minute it and transfer it and no no it is your duty and your responsibility to raise your children if you don't accept responsibility of raising them today they will become a liability in your life tomorrow Oh, yes. The Bible says that train a child in the way he should go. Train. Train the child. In, and you know, sometimes we let our children do whatever they want. Children don't do what they want. Sometimes we let them eat whatever they want. Children, you know, see, they are children. They, they must be under submission. You, if you don't train them today, tomorrow they will become a challenge for you. Number two strategically hand to your children through instructions the principles the lessons the insights the values that you believe will help them teach your children train them discipline them but the best way is to set the example for them to emulate let me take it again strategically hand to your children through instructions the principles the lessons the insight the values that you believe will work for them teach them train them and then discipline them discipline them one day i went to the mall and you know the the, the boy was about six seven years you know working with the parents and and you know, he went to pick something and, and the, the dad said, oh no, you know, there's no money for this. And the boy got angry, fell on the ground. He, he was running, got angry, throwing the leg. You, the, the, the boy was talking. The, the, the father kept cool, took two steps, carried him from the ground. You know, that, that spanking that makes you behave instantly. They gave him, pa, pa, daddy, I'm sorry, he said, that's right. Wow, I said, powerful. Just a step further, I went a step further. I saw another couple with their son. The boy was me behaving the couple and they go, we don't do that. I don't do that. And I said, look, look, look at it. Look, look at it. You see, it's important for us to discipline our children. I mean, as a young man, when I was growing up, I mean, my mom, when we saw my when I see my mother, I sit up. I mean, the the eyes. The communication from the eyes, you will sit up. You, you, ah, yeah. If the book is 300 meters away, you will fly and carry the book and sit down instantly. And today, we celebrate the discipline they give to us because it's brought us far. Please, strategically hand over to your children. Hand over to them the principles the values, the insights that you think will help them become better people. Number three, give your children wisdom before you give them wealth. Let me take it again. Give your children wisdom before you give them wealth. If you give them wealth before wisdom, they'll become rich fools. Give your children wisdom before you give them wealth. If you give them wealth before wisdom, they'll become rich fools. Number four, never use negative words on your children. They turn out according to the words you speak to them. 
no matter how angry you are, don't use negative words on your children. You know, sometimes when the husband is not there, the wife will look at the son and then he will say, oh dear, as for you, your behavior is like your father. And then when the mother too is not there and the husband is with the daughter, he say, you, you are like your mother. So you see, when the two of them meet, then they will ask each other, Kwame, they say, Ajua, in Kuala Kromosawai, they look like the two of you. No matter how angry you are, don't use negative words on your children. There's a story of a young man whose parents used to call him Oko Yakagbomo. If you speak Ghana, Oko Yakagbomo. That means Oko the useless boy. And every day when they meet Obuwe Yakagbomo Jibo, you are useless. You are useless. The boy went to school and a new teacher came. The new teacher met the boy. What is your name? He said, Oko Yakagbomo. <laughs> because that's how they've been calling the boy from the house. The teacher said, what did you say? He said, Oko Yakagbomo. He said, ah. Are you sure? The teacher said, can I visit you at home? He said, why not? Caught to the house, visited the parents. Oh, I came to visit your son. Uh, no, no, the parents said, oh, naka yaka bomo. Then the teacher realized, that, oh, please, no matter how angry you are, don't use negative words on your children. Number five, maintain a healthy balance between correction, affirmation, correction, and commendation. Maintain a healthy balance between correction and affirmation. Where you have to affirm them, affirm them. Where you have to correct them, correct them. And then where you have to commend them, commend them. Then finally, be involved in your children's life choices. They are friends. Where are their friends coming from? Their friends, what are their background? Listen, the Bible says if you walk with the wise, you'll be wise. The Bible says be you not deceived. Evil company corrupts good manners. What TV programs are your children watching? Be involved. Select at a certain age, select the kind of dresses they wear for them. Be involved. I believe with all my heart that if we get these principles at work, indeed, a glorious family and a blessed family will be our portion. The Lord bless you. I want, I want to sing it the way, the way we used to sing it in my...